It is such an honor to be here. As a former military medical doctor, uh, myself and a member of the Rotary Fellowship of Military Veterans and Rotary Action a Group on Mental Health Initiatives, this is really a great bridge to make a greater impact as we all strive to do. I myself have sought mental health services and I'm very open about that uh, as it, uh, I think it works to reduce stigma as we talk about our own um, uh, our own uh, situations at times. And so I am a very strong mental health advocate based on my experiences of taking care of over 15,000 uh, service members as well as my own experiences. So as we've talked about, you know, veterans, what they face are, are largely, or, or I should say health um, consequences of what veterans face are related to physical injuries and uh, disabilities. You know, often we'll see uh, injuries such as traumatic brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, they'll have uh, amputations and, and so forth. And I took care of, majority of who I took care of uh, at Walter Reed Army Medical Center were from uh, Afghanistan. And so, um, and, and often between the ages of, of 20 and 30, um, and so we've talked about the, the mental health issues, post-traumatic uh, stress dis. You know, I, I really like the fact that you know, uh, this is the first time I've heard of it uh, called post-traumatic growth because in the U.S. we often refer to it as post-traumatic stress disorder, but I think from today on I will call it post-traumatic growth. Um, it is very uh, significant based on the repeated traumatic exposures that uh, our, our service members face. Depression and anxiety, as mentioned, uh, are the, the most common, and, and social media and digital toxicity is real. There's a growing body of research that says that, you know, everything that uh, we see, given that it can't be censored and there's this uh, freedom of speech and, and so forth, can actually exacerbate mental health uh, issues and, and anxiety and depression. And often service members will resort to substance abuse and so, or substance use, I, sh I should say. And we've, we've touched on the uh, risk uh, related to suicide and, and service members, uh, not to mention the chronic health uh, conditions that they face just based on exposure during their deployments uh, related to respiratory illnesses, infectious disease, and, and just chronic uh, health conditions um, and environmental hazards. And, and let's face it, globally, the veterans' health care system are just strained in, in, in any country, and that includes the, the U.S. and men on all around. So, you know, we see often the veterans facing isolation and social support and needing social support, and that's where I think Rotarians can really um, make an impact. And so, um, not to mention, there's uh, homelessness that uh, many veterans face. So when transition to, transitioning to uh, civilian life, I, I find that to be a very, um, a very critical period in which Rotarians can uh, have a, the greatest impact. And so, you know, why I say that is that if we can, uh, what I plan on doing in our uh, district with our district approval is, is really creating a strong mentorship program with uh, Rotarians. Uh, um, especially military veteran uh, Rotarians. And, and so who can provide uh, perhaps uh, professional guidance or even those who can identify, okay, someone is not doing so well and so therefore, you know, we can recommend to uh, get further care in terms of speaking to your general practitioner or primary care doctor. Um, and, and so, and really re leveraging our, our community resources uh, as well. But uh, I, I think the, um, you know, the Rotary Action Group on Mental Health Initiatives really strives to, um, to have th a, a mission in which three foci are really huge. So breaking stigma, raising awareness, and increasing access to prevention and treatment. And so those three things are, are critical regardless of what pandemic we face, whether it was polio or whether it's now mental health and even more so specifically in, in the population that we are specifically talking about given the, the extent of trauma that they would have faced. So breaking stigma, just talking about even our own situations can often help veterans uh, realize that they're not alone. 
and and that helps to build awareness. The more we have uh, club projects, district projects, so you know, it was mentioned above even forming a club uh, that are focused on helping veterans. That's a, a brilliant idea. And uh, in terms of increasing access, having you know, the Rotarians, when we interact with our club members, if we see someone who's socially withdrawing, which is often uh, a very large um, indicator, then we can kind of uh, perhaps, uh, you know, speak to the, the service member and, and say, you know, is everything okay? How are you really doing, as, as our president, uh, uh, Gordon McAnally, uh, emphasizes? Because we often get into the just how are you doing, but really do, do we sometimes, often, do we really hear the answer? Um, no, because we're so preoccupied and, and busy in our own lives. So taking a moment to really um, ask how someone is doing, and, and you don't have to have an answer. No, you know, no one is saying that uh, uh, we all have to suddenly become instant mental health professionals. No, that's really not what we're saying. That's not what RAGME is saying. That's not what any mental health uh, professional would um, would say. But it's really just if if we can if we in Rotary, given that we are 1.4 million members strong can identify uh, key features of, of depression, anxiety, often the social isolation, meaning not coming to club meetings, um, then we can really identify and, and, and speak to the, the service members to say, hey, maybe you can you know, perhaps get help or be of a social support. I think the, the, the format in which we have our meetings and, and so forth, it's, and, and doing our community service, as we know, community service is a great way to help ourselves in the sense that when we help others, there are intrinsic hormones that just upregulate in our body, dopamine, serotonin, all of these things, um, uh, endorphins. And so um, we're helping ourselves by helping others. So getting service members involved in community service projects is, is great for Rotary, it's great for impact, but it's also great for them uh, themselves to kind of pull them away from the the isolation that uh, is often a, a byproduct of the depression. But, you know, I would say a step further is, uh, and these are all things that I would like to do in our um, uh, in our district as well in, in the future and would strongly support. We have a, a many, being in the Washington, D.C. area, we have many uh, military uh, facilities. And so I, I think what we do here in our, um, uh, in our fellowship and what we support can really be a pilot program that could really expand and have just immense uh, impact. So whether it's uh, supporting mental health uh, projects or initiatives, um, also fund, funding any type of uh, um, awareness campaigns, uh, you know, as, as needed, that that would be uh, wonderful. It is, it's great to expect uh, or hope, which is a better word, our, um, our communities to, to provide all of the services that are needed for, for veterans. But let's face it, we're all, we're all strained, whether it's our, our, our government or whether it's our, our health care facilities. And so Rotary can really make an impact and bridge the gap um, uh, that is there. And so I think uh, collaborating with veterans organizations, finding your local organization and saying, hey, you know, we want to help out and what are you doing? And rather than kind of recreating things that um, may have been done already or were not so efficient, partnering with the veterans organizations and amplifying their message of support for veterans is, is a, a great way for Rotarians to get involved. Not to mention, you know, when we're talking about uh, um, job training and placement programs, Rotarians are leaders, whether they are in, in their professional lives, even prior to joining Rotary, Rotary trends to attract leaders. And so um, there's a great opportunity there when we're talking about, you know, potential counseling and especially our awesome fellowship of military veterans who have that personal experience of, of, uh, of being around veterans and seeing the stresses 
because let's get let's face it civilians it's hard to understand these the stresses they would have maybe seen a movie or they would have you know um maybe their reality of of so-called understanding comes from there but it is difficult right so um, we have a unique opportunity as, as a Rotary Fellowship of Military Veterans to uh, really guide uh, new, new transitioning um, service members, veterans. And so whether it's job training, placement, if we've got any um, pull in, that, uh, um, in any of those fields, I think really reaching out to veterans and, and supporting um, new veterans is, is, is great. And once they see that Rotary... Uh, impact they will they too will love rotary so I think networking advocacy you know again I have to mention advocacy since I'm right next to DC but you know a lot of uh, um, veterans initiatives there and, and really getting uh, rotary's name out there to say we we care about our veterans as well is, is really important so um, those are really the, the the big things in terms of uh, how rotary can make an uh, impact